how did you and Macklemore originally get connected? Um, we we kind of debate about this, but he so he went to um, Evergreen College uh-huh. in Olympia. He used to live in Olympia, um, as I did, and I I think we met at. He, I think he says it was a battle or something, but I think it was like a Brother Ali show, Ooh. and we both were opening for it, like way back in the day, like 2004 or something. And um, I think we both were like, yo, you're dope. And he was like, you're dope. And then uh, and then we just started kicking it. Um, and it was a lot of Paul Masson and Blunts and, <laughs> uh, and Shrooms. Dude, <laughs> yeah. Shrooms with Macklemore? That sounds amazing. Oh, yeah, bro. You know, this was before he was sober. You know? <laughs> yeah, this yeah, was yeah. Like, at Evergreen State College, you're definitely experimenting. And so, um, <laughs> and so, yeah, no, we became like real good friends and have been ever since. And what were you going to school for? Um, I didn't go to Evergreen. Uh, <laughs> he went to Evergreen. I went to the community college, okay. uh, SPS, okay. CC, and then dropped out as soon as I got the opportunity to go on tour with a group called Atmosphere. <laughs> oh, of course. Who um, wouldn't drop out for that, right? Yeah, yeah so I was out. Um, and then, yeah, and then the rest is kind of history. Um, Damn. Started making music in his apartment behind Pizza Hut. And uh, that was, I think, a couple years later, he put out his first album, The Language of My World. And um, and I had did some stuff on there. Working with Macklemore, do you think you should have had a bigger platform given to you afterwards? No, because I don't think I should have anything given to me. Um, the thing is, it's like... There was a platform given to me, and then it's mm. all about what you do with that. Um, what do you do after your show? Do you like go kick it, or do you go and mingle with hella fans and try to get them to buy your album? Right. Um, with me, I know that the people I learned this early when I first started touring with Ben is like. I would say maybe 75% of the people that are coming to see Macklemore, number one, they're coming to see Macklemore. They don't care who is going on first or yeah. any of that, unless it's like somebody super popular. Um, but if you're just a no-name opener and you're opening for Macklemore and it's not your home state, um, like I used to walk through the crowd and hear people literally saying like, I don't care who's going on first, you know, but I'm <laughs> going on first and I'm just like, oh God. Fuck. Um, and so I realized early that Macklemore's fan base isn't necessarily the demographic that I want for me personally. Like I might get a, you know, out of a show of like um, 10,000 people, 8,000 people are gonna like me. You know what I'm saying? But 2,000 people are actually gonna do the work to like follow me. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. 2,000 out of 10,000. Because the other 8,000 really don't even like hip-hop. They like Macklemore. You know what I'm saying? So would you if, say Macklemore's hip-hop? I would. But see, he also, he can do whatever. Like, he could do some, like, country. He could do a country song. He could do some hip-hop where it's like, okay, this. And usually when he gets on that tip, people will say, well, this reminds me of, like, what he used to do. Like, But he can also get on that pop shit because... The pop shit is what goes universal. You know what I'm saying? It's like he could spend all day rapping about a street in Seattle that nobody in France has ever heard of. But he's got both. You know what I'm saying? He's got the Seattle. He's got the town cuts. Um, and so he just he just figured out how to ride, you know, find a balance yeah. um, from being pop and then being himself and then uh, being hip hop which isn't just like making music, it's like a, a lifestyle. So he is that, um, but he's also a businessman. He's also a family man. He's also funny as hell and he's not a gangster. So he, he can't make gangster music, no. you know what I'm saying? So what else is there but to make music that's him? It's about having good times, it's about love, or it's about um, his sobriety, which, you know what I'm saying? It's his life. Um, so with that, being said in me where I'm making music mine's a little bit more soulful um I'm turning up sometimes I'm drinking I'm smoking you know what I'm saying um the crowd that comes to see him a lot of them respect the sobriety about what he's doing and a lot of the front row is usually people with signs that are like sober for seven years you Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying um 
it's not a tour where it's like groupies backstage or any of that. His wifey's tour manager, their baby's back there, you know what I'm saying? So, so as far as like a platform, having Mag having Maglemore give you a platform isn't necessarily the best thing for all artists. Like mm. it, it's, it wouldn't work for everybody. It's like also he can he can put you in front of the world like and this goes for any artist who has homies or people from the town that want to be put on they can put you in front of the world um if the world don't fuck with you the world just don't fuck with you <laughs>